I've had a lot of emails from people that have asked me to explain a little bit more about how the Scanimate actually works. And I'm going to start zoomed in here because this is the CRT where the information comes out on the Scanimate. And normally we keep this little door closed and there's actually another camera that I'm going to start right now. And so I'm going to switch to that camera. I'm recording on both that camera and this camera at the same time. This one panel was initially the entire Scanimate when it first began. We have an initial final button. Okay, so with the machine in the final mode, uh, the, the rate at which it goes from initial to final is controlled by either the A or the B rate knob. I'm going to speed it up so that it goes fairly quickly. Okay, so to make just a very simple animation, we can go to the final mode and we can set a size and a position. So for example, if we wanted this particular piece of artwork I've got, which is just coming from a simple little character generator, I set the depth control and the position controls and hopefully I can do a split screen or something so you can see this. Then I go to initial. Now this was final, this is initial. So in initial I might want this to be essentially a dot up in the upper left hand corner. So when I go from initial to final, I've got a zoom. So I can slow that down so that it moves very slowly. And I've got an animation now that might take 10 seconds. OK, so that's a very simple, basic move from initial to final using just the animation control panel. All right. Now remember, an, an, Scanimate really took off when they figured out that they could move words with it. So that's a lot of the magic of this machine. What's kind of interesting is that they added the ability to do things to the picture let me move my initial position more into the screen here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these oscillators. And I'm going to say we're going to start with the oscillators at their maximum. So what I've done is I've applied a sine wave to the vertical and another sine wave to the horizontal. And I can change the frequencies of these. And because these are locked or actually free running compared to the scan rates then they appear to roll. I can actually phase lock it to the vertical frequency for example and now I've got these set for what's called max to min so that means it's at its maximum in initial and when I push initial to final, the sequence control, it makes the transition from oscillation fully on to oscillation fully off. There are some variations on that. I can have it be constant, and it resolves in a little bit different way. I can actually make it go from min, well, that's where I had it min to max. And so then we still can retain our initial dot up there in the corner or nearly there. 
and then it gets big in the middle and then resolves back down at the end. Okay, so that was applying oscillations to horizontal and vertical. And in that case, they were phase locked. Now, if I made them free running, and I'm going to go back to max to min here. Pull the amplitude down a little bit. And adjust the frequency of the sine wave going to horizontal. And interestingly enough, I can make that be a sawtooth or a sine wave. And notice since it's free running, as it comes close to the scan rate of the television sweep rate, it changes. I can do the same with the vertical. It's unlocked. And actually, we'll start to make a uh, kind of a sine-cosine effect there. Not a very good resolution, but it's kind of interesting. I think it works better if it's locked to the frame, at least in the vertical. Okay, so we have the ability to apply that to horizontal and vertical, or we also have a depth oscillator. Now here it's phase locked, but what that's doing is applying a sine wave to the overall height and width. So for example, by phase locking it, I can make it pretty extreme that way. And it almost looks like perspective. And then as we go from initial to final, that gets turned off. And we have a nice move between the two. All right, so that's basically what goes on here in the animation panel using just simple initial to final with this one control panel. Uh, there are a couple other things I could probably go into a bit here. Um, as I said, we get the rate controls, three oscillators for horizontal, vertical, and depth. We've got position, horizontal and vertical for the final, horizontal and vertical position and depth for the initial. And then over here, we've got uh, intensity control, which basically is the brightness as it appears on the CRT. We've got axis which has to do with the offset of the uh, sawtooth wave. And then we've got a monitor, and this is really handy. There's a scope over here. I'll move the camera so you can maybe see that a little bit better. I apologize for my camera work here. There's just a general purpose oscilloscope here. And so I can look at any point in the signal chain of the Scanimate as it goes from all of these controls into the CRT. And this is especially useful as I'm looking at waveforms if I need to control the shape of that waveform. And I also have a probe that I can connect through the patch panel that I'll talk about in a later uh, video. So that's just a basic introduction to the Scanimate, how the animation control panel works, and how we can use analog signals to warp and bend and modulate uh, a piece of artwork in real time.